Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Reading your Bible to what the Bible says without changing it. And the same day, what we just read, when the even was come, around 6 p.m., darkness, he says unto him, let us pass over onto the other side. Red letter, that's Jesus speaking. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, wind, no rain, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. The, the ship is filled with water. You're going to get more water inside the ship than outside the ship. You don't have a ship no more. You've got water. He was on the hinder part of the ship, the back end of the ship, asleep on a pillow. That's God. God ate. God drank. God breathed. God wept. God slept. God prayed. God walked. God talked. And they wake him and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? He arose, rebuked the wind, said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto him, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now, what kind of statement is that? Four of them are fishermen. The others are all kinds of different occupations. Of course, this kind of storm is going to frighten them, scare them. Water's coming inside the ship. Even the fishermen are upset. So where, where is the statement, why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? Why is that statement? You can't be afraid of... It goes back to verse 35. Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. What did they say? You care as not we perish? Jesus didn't say we're going to die in the middle of the sea. Jesus said we're going to the other side. They didn't believe him. There's the lack of faith. There's the problem. He said, no, why are you so fearful? Well, I told you we're going to the other side. How is it I, that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? They don't even know the, the fullness of Jesus. He's not only man, he's God. He controls the entire environment. That even the wind and sea obey him. So look at their stance of their belief on who Jesus really is, that this man gets up in the ship or sits in the ship, whatever he does in the ship, peace, be still. And next thing you know, they're sitting on a nice calm water. Chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over to the other side of the sea, exactly what Jesus told them. Unto the country, the gatherings. Now, Mark takes one of these men. Matthew, in chapter 8, tells us there's two of them. Mark puts it one specific man. Nothing wrong. They came to the other side of the sea, unto the country, the gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, Immediately there met him out of the tombs, graveyard, cemetery, a man with an unclean spirit. So the first thing with the unclean man, he's hanging around with the dead. He's living amongst the dead. And your horror movies are surrounded by the dead. Your horror movies are an unclean spirit. And then these horror companies, these, this Hollywood and all these places that come up with these movies, then they're going to turn around and make a Christian movie. 
where, you know, Officer Dave, whose name is really Tom Fields, oh, you're a liar, is married to Mary, and Mary's real name is Margaret, you're a liar. And the scene is set in Chicago, and you're doing it in California. You're a liar. Hey, you want to watch a Christian movie? No, I don't want to see a bunch of liars. Mostly, especially still with these movies coming out. How dare you? How dare you get on a screen and lie and proclaim to be Jesus? I don't want to be in your shoes, brother. I don't want to have to be in the, sho the shoes, whatever judgment you're at. I'm not going to say they're saved or lost, but I don't want standing face with face with Moses and you said you were Moses and the Bible says there was no man like Moses who spoke face to face with God don't you even dare get up there and say I'm Abraham but you don't have what Abraham had I wouldn't dare because maybe th those that do say they're Abraham maybe God would say okay what about if I take your child what are you going to do? I'd, I'd be very careful. So they immediately came out of the tombs a man that had an unclean spirit. It's funny because unclean spirit, because later on we're going to learn there's many. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. He lived in the tombs. He was a homeless man in, in a cemetery. Now I'm going to tell you right now, if you've got somebody, this is a surety. If you got somebody who, who is living in a cemetery, a graveyard, there's something really unclean about that man. There's something devilish, a surety. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. All right, handcuffs. All right, now there are story of police in hospitals that they'll get somebody, they'll put handcuffs on them, and they get out of those handcuffs. That's not always necessary demonology, devilology, the unclean spirit. That could be somebody who's on drugs, somebody where drugs give them an extra amount of strength. Though drugs are in the realm of devils. Okay? Well, I'm not going to say every person that takes drugs and, and gets to that point is of a devil. But you got somebody who's got superior strain. I'm not going to tell you that somebody who goes to the to the gym, works out, has got muscles and breaks. I'm not going to tell you of the devil. This is a classification of a devil possessed man. He lives in the tombs and he's very, very strong. And not with Jay. Right. He could have a a a, a talent uh, of undoing. Being able to unlock, I studied to be a police officer. And I'm not going to tell you, there is a way to undo handcuffs if you don't have a key. I have been trained, I know how to do it. And you can sit in the back of a police car or wherever you, and you can undo those handcuffs. You're not devil, devil possessed, you're smart. <laughs> Because he had been often bound with fetters, kind of bonds and cuffs and, and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. All right, so another mark, uh, still is that mark, is you can't bind a devil possessed man. And, okay, you got somebody who, uh, I was, I happened to be in the hospital and I was in the, the psych ward and they got the bench down there where you can tie them down. I would assume that there have been people who have busted those, those, uh, what do you call it? Those straps. Are they devil possessed? No, they could be stoned, high, drugged. They could be somebody who works out. And then probably some that are devil possessed. Don't go right into, oh, this is, you know, You know, uh, we know Uncle Sam, you know, he, he goes out to the graveyard every week and, and visit the relatives and all that, and, and, and he's not devil-possessed. You go to the graveyard to visit, you know, your loved ones, you dress up, well, you talk to, listen, I, I talk to my wife at the grave. I'm not devil-possessed. They're not devil-possessed. 
But if you make it your dwelling, you got unheard of powers. Now, this is the problem you get with the charismatic movement, because if the unclean devils can do this, what about all the powers that the charismatics prove to do? And the charismatic movement is anything but Christian. Now, there could be another thing added to this thing. It's a danger of Christian magic. It's all illusion. You can do anything with, with photograph. I got a thing on my Facebook. I get every once in a while. I get it all the time. But, but there every once in a while, they'll show you how they take a camera, and they will show you how they film things that are not real. And one of the things they will do, they will take a hamburger, and they'll film, and, and the mustard's not really mustard. It's it's yellow glue, and the ketchup is is, is not ketchup, and the hamburger is not ketchup. And they, how they stay together and everything like that, they use glue, or they put two picks. You know, they'll fix it all up. And you got these people, you see them once in a while, you know, he's going to make this building disappear. It's all illusion of the devil. Magic is the devil, and you could be devil-possessed in a magician thing, which you ought not to be doing in the church. And as a Christian, you are in the realm of trickery. And you'll see all the time. He Dini did that all the time. He'll show you how he get out of the handcuff, how he's all bounded up. He's put inside of a crate, dumped in the water, and boom, here he is. Now, am I saying Houdini is devil possessed? I don't know if he saved or lost. I'm going to say, you know, you got to be careful. Don't go running in there and say, oh, the Stalin said they're devil possessed. I ain't saying it, but you know what? It's awesome. That'd be like a, like me saying, all right, you come up to me, look, look I, got a, I got a bump on my neck now. Okay, it's cancer. No. <laughs> Please go to a doctor, get blood work, and get x rays and all that. It may not be cancer. I mean, one of the worst things the doctor told me, my wife one time, I forget who it was, it was but we said in medical book, and I, the doctor said, do me a favor with those medical books. I said, well, what's that? Just throw them in the garbage. I mean, you you can look on the internet. I got the next thing you know, you, you, you're supposed to be dead three years ago. You got something that you go tell the doctor, I, the doctor looks like he laughs. Okay, this is the thing like prayer. God says yes, God says no, God says not now. This is the thing, it could be God giving you a sickness, it could be the devil giving you sickness, or it could be something you gave yourself the sickness. This man is, is possessed with a devil of surety. And this is the characteristic. Neither any man tame him. Now, whether they put him in the graveyard or he ran off to the graveyard. This is a man that if you were to see him in town, including the police and all that, across the street. And sad, we're going to learn something about this man later. And always night and day, he was in the mountains. So they like high places. Now, don't go turn around and say everyone that goes through the Alps, everybody who climbs a mountain, everybody wants to go to Colorado, everybody wants, you know, don't say you're devil-possessed. But in the beginning of Genesis, there were a group of people who built a tower to reach to the heavens, not God. These devil-possessed, they go to the highest mountains to reach out not to God, but powers and principalities are in the air. So everybody who lives in the mountain is not devil-possessed, but one of the characteristics of a devil-possessed man, he likes the mountains. And in the tombs, he's inside the tombs. Now, there are people who go into a cemetery. Uh, I've gone into a cemetery. They got the two. You'll see them in there. You know, it's their family, whatever. They're not devil possessed. Now, if they got a sleeping bag, they got a pillow, or whatever, they, they got a camp set up, okay? Turn around, walk the other way. Don't make any ruckus. Get out of there. Crying. So, again, somebody who's always crying, they're not devil possessed. It could be depression. 
They could be in pain. Or crying is a mark of devil possession. And it's not always, you know, boo-hoo, crying in the Bible is you screaming, you're hollering. Cutting himself with stones. Well, there are people over in the island nations, there are Catholics that sit there, they do penance, they rip themselves, they beat themselves, they make themselves bleed for their atonement. I'm going to tell you right now, that is a surety of devil possession. Well, maybe, the, no, there's no navy about it. If you're out there, abusing yourself, you out there cutting yourself, you out there getting tattoos in yourself, you are devil possessed. Listen, there's nothing nothing worse today when, when, when you're out in the public and you see these beautiful women out there and they got these marks of tattoos all over them. What on earth? Getting ready for the mark mark. 666. Six, six. There's nothing more undefiled to see an African American have a tattoo. It's like, at least you could have done it was white or yellow. <laughs> you pay for that tattoo, you know, you can't even see it. And one of the things they have is people who try to commit suicide, they'll try to slit their wrists. Now they devil possess. I'm not going to say yes. I'm not going to say no, but I mean, You cannot say devil possession. You can't say Stolly said devil possession because it can be drugs. I have seen a man one one time in, in, intoxicated or whatever you want to call it in drugs and, and in alcohol just rub himself up against the, the sidewalk and base abrasing himself. Well, that's because he's on drugs. Without the drugs, he might be a computer operator. He might might be, you know, a geek. I don't know. They say a lot of those people who are in those kind of careers do smoke and do do drugs. We read in Proverbs about the drunk goes out there and, and you know, he gets all these wounds. He doesn't even know how he get these wounds. Is he devil possessed? Well, liquor is used to be called when I grew up as a boy. You used to have to go to the spirit shop to get your liquor. There are spirits surrounded by alcohol. Devil possession by intoxicating fluids such as alcohol. Yes. Yes. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran. And worshipped him. That's not happening in America today. America is running away from Jesus. America, what you see on, uh, on the news, what you see going on in America is devil possession, is the works of Satan. Sodom, Gomorrah, Sodomites, and I don't know what sex, that's devil possession of a nation. And they're running far away from Jesus. So is it devil possession of the devil or not? Well, when you see the devils come up against Jesus face to face, they worship him. They acknowledge Jesus who, they, who he is. Whatever spirit is in America today does not do that. We are not a Christian nation. And we'll learn something else more about that when we come to the end. If you have all this stuff going on in America... And you got somebody out there with the gospel bringing you Jesus. They would run up to you. They will acknowledge who Jesus is. They may not believe, but they may acknowledge Jesus. That's not happening with your street preacher. That's not happening with your, your Bible witness of the gospel.
I, I've seen some people in in the public ministry where devil possess they they honor God, but they, they rebuke. <laughs> and this guy, people just, just keep please keep walking, keep going. <laughs> And he cried with a loud voice, okay? Don't say because Stiley can preach loud and everybody hates it on the streets of Daytona Beach. He's got a devil. So people have said it. I've had people call me Satan. I've had Jehovah Witnesses call me the devil. You got such a loud voice. You, you can't be doing what the Bible. You're, you're turning people away. <laughs> Now, don't go say, as Stolly said, everybody who speaks loud is a devil-possessed man or woman. But that is a characteristic of one, but not all. Now, you ever want to see a loud voice? You watch someone who is about to be arrested by the police. He's going to be loud. He's going to be obnoxious. Is he possessed by a devil? I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't want to be arrested. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, and you be careful with what you say about me. I'm going to tell you a lot of these riots, a lot of these civil rights things, a lot of these, these you know, we're going to go to Washington, march and all that. They're loud. A lot of these things for the for the Planned Parenthood, they get out there, they're loud. A lot of these politics out there, they get out there, they're loud. Are they devil? I'm not going to tell you if they're devil or not. This is like salvation. Only God knows and only the devil knows his own. I don't know when I get to heaven, when I'll be absent from the body and presence of the Lord with all the angels. I don't know if I'm going to say, okay, that angel's God, that angel's the devil. I don't know. And you're not going to be, well, that one has white and that one has red. It don't work like that. This guy is an average, well, um, not average. This guy is a human male. And he's possessed with the devil. And he's got characteristics to say, stay away from him. I've seen those people in my lifetime. I remember one time as a little boy, me and my friend, we were playing and this red-headed man come up. And he was just in. Somebody called. You know, next thing I know, the cops are there. My, my friend and I were afraid of this man. And he came up against the telephone pole. I can picture And he fell against the telephone pole and just, was it a devil? Was the guy drunk? I don't know. You see a lot of homeless people like that. I mean, they devil possessed. Or, hey, listen, they some of them do a lot of drugs. Some of them, their entire especially up north where it's cold, a lot of their things is hard liquor because they got to stay warm. Some of them will buy cough medicine with alcohol. Just <laughs> Some of these people, I'm going to say something, you're not going to be like, some of these people may be like they are because of prescription drugs. My mom told me when I was, I was a little boy, I was on Ritalin. She said she would have to tie me to the chair because all of a sudden I had no fear. I'd be walking out the edge of the porch. What was that? That was me knocking. Uh, what was that? Was I possessed with a devil? It was a drug? What would have happened if I would have been stuck on that drug? What about all these drugs today for all these abbreviations they say all these people have? Where all of a sudden did all these abbreviations came? They came by the pharmaceutical companies working with the doctors to say, hey, we above can make all kinds of money. You ever wonder, you ever been in a doctor's office and he's got advertisements all around his room for prescriptions. His prescription pad is given to you by this drug company. Uh -huh. Yeah. Maybe it's the love of money. He said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, the son of the most high God? Well, yeah, he knows who Jesus is. Would you like to go to any public school 
And if you could stop every child that comes to the door of that church and ask him, who is Jesus? Would you get son of God? I don't know how often. How about if you took your, your typical Baptist Sunday school and stopped every kid that came out of the classroom and then say, who is Jesus? What kind of answer would you get? If you stop America and say, America, who's Jesus? He's a good teacher. He's a... Because there are scholars out there. That, you know, he's just a good man. He, you know, there are religions out there. He was just a man. The unclean spirit says, you're the son of God. How come the unclean spirits of Satan can acknowledge who Jesus is and America cannot? And you're going to turn around and say, we're a Christian nation. You're going to say, God bless America with the Bible. No, 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 no. I adjure thee by God. I plead to you by God. I, I really exhort to you by God. Look at that. The guy's making an oath by God. You don't do that in the courtroom today. You swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. You don't do that in the courtroom today. Young going clear, it says, adjure thee by God, Jehovah, you're the son of God. <laughs> this devil-possessed man, a surety is a devil-possessed man, 100%, according to the Holy Spirit, is a lot better then your U U.S., United States, American court system says, I swear by God. And he ain't talking about Buddha, he ain't talking about Mary, he ain't talking about the Pope. He's talking about the God that made him and that he was in God's heaven. That thou torment me not. You know what Luke says in hell? Torments, tormenting. You know, you know, you know this unclean spirit, this this devil possessed spirit, not the man. Do you know what he knows? He's going to a place of torment. Would you like to take two hundred a thousand people who sit in pulpits? I mean, excuse me, that sit in pews from the pulpit that gets messages. Would you like to ask how many of those people that sit in a pew of a church and find out how many do not believe in hell? All is well, there is no hell. Tell that to this unclean spirit. Cross represents that to, I believe, is Luke 16, 15 or 16. You know, they say Jesus, and he did. He preached more about hell. You also got the message of hell from the unclean spirits. <laughs> and, and, and you get your biblical scholar smarty pants, whose heads are so big it's full of crap. No, well, there's no hell. It, 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 it's the, you know, it's the grave. It's, you know, Hades and... This unclean spirit has more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding than a scholar. Because they change your Bible, Bibles to, you know, Hades. And the Job, a witness will tell you, you know, hell is the grave. He's living in the grave. <laughs> and he's not being tormented. Except for when he cuts himself. Or in agony and pain. For he said unto him, Jesus had said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. He asked him, Jesus, what is thy name? Now, come on. You don't think Jesus knows? But he's got his 12 disciples around him. And again, like, like Genesis 3, God, Jesus, wants this person, or this, this, this being, to acknowledge who he is and what he is. And he answered and said, my name is Legion, for we are many. Well, <laughs> so you telling me that a devil is 
the movies a size of a human being? Many? I don't think so. You telling me that a devil is that little guy that sits on the shoulder? That ain't many. I'll tell you what the many is. I'm going to tell you, and you know, we don't have time to study that right now. But I'll tell you, it's Beelzebub. They're about the size of a fly. And Jesus speaking about hell, he says, where the worm dieth not. The very first thing you see Satan showing up to man, he shows up in a serpent. A slimy thing. In order to get many a legion size into one human being, and if he sought him much that he would not send them away out of the, uh, if he sought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. We don't want to leave Earth. <laughs> we like it here. Heavens earth are gonna they're gonna burn up, they're gonna flee. And there was a high there was nigh under the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. Unclean animals according to Levitical law, and we're under the law. All the devils, plural, not demons, besought him. They all get together, unity. Can you imagine what this conversation... Can you imagine the disciples there listening to this? Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. So the devils are inside of a human male. I say male purposely because I want to upset people. Do you know what the next, next best choice a devil has besides a human being? Send me in those unclean pigs. You know, the swine, the pig, is the only animal that can't twist his head up to look up to God. That swine in the law is an unclean animal. They say more people are been eaten by swine than, than people would even believe. Swine will eat their own babies. Swine will eat anything. You give them the opportunity. And look. Job 1 and 2. He said, Job 1 and 2. They seek Jesus, who is God, permission. They don't go running off the swine. With, you know, okay, see, we're going to swine. Uh-uh. Uh, Jesus. Can we have your permission? Satan, before Joe, uh, before God, I need your permission. So would you think with Job 1 and 2, would you think that these devils would, uh, I don't know what this guy's name is, uh, God, can we have your permission to enter that guy? They need permission to go into the swine. Scripture, I don't read the Old Testament. Okay, you missed out. Forth with Jesus gave them leave. So when you go into the into the Navy and you come ashore or whatever it is, you know, you, 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 listen, you know, I've been doing this job long enough. I mean, I need a vacation. Well, the Navy doesn't call it vacation. By the way, we're by a seashore. They were in a boat. <laughs> Interesting. The Navy calls it sure leave. They'll call you in and say, hey, you know, you've been so long, you you're, you do a good job and all that. You can go to shore and do what you want to do. Okay, all right, sure. Here's your sure leave. You have three days, four days, whatever it's called. King James Bible, I guarantee the modern Bibles, don't they have another word for it. Your King James Bible opens up to the United States Navy. And the unclean spirits went out. Now, Hollywood would have this big, dramatic, you know, clouds and color. and It don't say that. It just went out. Did they see it? Did it? I don't know. And entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. 
deviled ham. You want a Bible verse for deviled ham? There it is. I mean, deviled ham is pickled ham. But you have to run to the Bible to get the name. I don't know what the modern Bible says. There were about 2,000 pigs, not, not devils, and were choked in the seed, hogicide. When they went into the swine, it drove the swine so crazy they did belly flops into the water and they drowned. When they say hogicide, oh, Okay, here, here's another classification. Don't say all suicide is devil possessed. Because I know Christians who, who have committed great pain, great suffering. But I'm not going to say many. I'm going to say some of your suicidal attempts and actual is devil possession. And there have been stories where, you know, somebody has been possessed. They'll say that this... This spirit has talked to me to tell me to kill the family dog. Kill the family cat. And then it goes up. And it goes up. You say you believe that stuff? Yeah, because the devil's a liar. The devil's a murderer. And he's got all these agents. And and these devils, there are so many. There, 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 there is a legion between two men. And they that fed the swine fled. I hope they weren't Jews. And it's funny, when the prodigal son is feeding the swine, he's in the swine, he finally comes to himself. He says, I'm going to repent. I'm going to get right. So, the people taking care of the swine fled. King Saul was a man and his family who took care of asses and they were lost. I mean, he lost the asses. They had to go find him. David, a man after God, took care of sheep. Here are people taking care of unclean swine. The Bible says, with an ass, if thou shalt redeem an ass, they don't redeem an ass with, with a lamb. Thou shalt break his neck. And told it in the city. And in the country. Here's your news report. Hey, live on the spot. We've seen this man. Jesus. Look at that. He killed a whole bunch of. Well, wait a minute. Tell me where it says in Mark that they said. Devils ran into those sheep. I mean, the, the swine. All these, all these pigs just started running. They ran into the, the, the water and they drowned. And they went out to see what it was that happened or done. And they come to Jesus. Okay, here's the problem. Jesus upset the pork belly market. The pork belly market went down and drowned. Remember in Acts 16, there was a girl, she's possessed with the devils, and these guys, they made money off her, and Paul took the devil and cast it out of her, and he ends up in jail because they lost their funds. There's another case where they're making silver swines to Diana, and they come in, they preach the gospel, not church. And all the all the, the country, all the beans are trying to turn to Jesus, and they're not buying the knickknack patty wax, and they get mad and they raise up a whole kind of rocket. Great is Diana, which is an unclean god. The swine are unclean animals. Now they come to Jesus, they came to Paul. I think it was Peter with Diana, but I'm not sure or Paul. They raise a ruckus. So when you go down to Daytona Beach Farmer's Market and you bring Jesus and there's a ruckus 
and nobody's coming, they get all upset and call the cops to come and see what's going on. And see him that was possessed with the devil. So they know who this guy is. And I bet you he's got a name and he's got a character. And they probably got stories about him. And had the legion. Notice the word had. He's sitting. Wow. That's a statement to say he didn't do very much sitting. Clothed. He was naked. You know another sign of, of devil possession again? Not, I mean, you get in the shower, you take off your clothes. Please do. You get naked with your spouse. Please do. When you get arrested, they tell you take off all your clothes and they do a search on you and all that and they make sure there's no left. Please do. When the doctor says, you know, here's a gown, please take off all your clothes. But Please do. But when you're in a dollar store and half your boobs are showing out, When you are working for a chicken place and your butt is just really, there it is. You got such skin tight clothes, even a sweat couldn't fit between you and your, your clothes. When you're walking down the beach and you got a string up your butt, that's your bikini. When you're walking around and you're wearing a, a fancy colored powdered patterned bra, or even you're not wearing clothes at all because there are places I know New York and I forget the other place. There are places where women can walk around topless out in the public and there's no law. That's the fact is you want to get naked on the movies, you want to get naked on the television, you want to get naked everywhere in America. That's not a sign of Christianity. The sign of Christianity is you're sitting and you put clothes on. America is not a Christian nation no more. She is not God blessed. She is devil possessed because she could. She get all naked. I would hate. For, listen, they passed. I never thought they would pass a law to say that marijuana is, is legal. Never. Dragnet saw it. And I posted that on my Facebook. Lord forbid if America says tomorrow that anybody can go out in the public and they can be stark naked and oh, Lord forbid I'm having my groceries delivered. <laughs> Just leave it out in the porch. I don't even want to look out the window. Because if America would be given that freedom, we want freedom. I'm telling you. I had one day I was working in the, in the grocery store here in Florida, and we got spring break. And a woman, there were a whole bunch of teens came in here, and she had this skin-clad bottoms. Again, it was a, with the thong. And over her breasts, there was no bikini. She had stickers. I don't know. Uh, it wasn't even an outfit. It was stick. I don't know what you call them, stickers, whatever, over her nipples. That was it. And all the church got upset a while back uh, on the Super Bowl night during the Super Bowl halftime. Uh, Jenna, whatever her name is, I forget her name. They're out there, her and this other guy, they're getting there singing. They pull this thing. He rips off her, her, her juco or, or whatever it was. And then her nipple was showing because she didn't have one of them pasties. And all the church got upset. We saw her nipple we, you know, on the football game. We, oh my question is, what are you doing watching the football game on the church night? How many Christians saw that booby? Listen, when it comes to nakedness, all right, let's start with the children. A father should only see the son's nakedness if, if it's a medical. Uh, a, a mother shall see the daughter's nakedness if it's a medical. Today, that's not a portion. You got, you, oh, never mind. Or a doctor. 
A wife is to only see the nakedness of her husband, and husbands only to see the nakedness of his wife. And medical practitioners have to see the, sometimes the nakedness of, of their patients. America has no longer where it used to be a law where a man sees the nakedness of another woman or a woman sees the nakedness of somebody who's not her husband called adultery. That's not a crime no more. You take a left down my road here, take a right, take a left, take a right, go straight down. You can go to a topless bar. Right across from that topless bar is a bunch of naughty, naughty, x-ray kind of crap you can buy. In America, God bless America, King James Bible, Okay? That's America. You know what I'm saying? America has shown up in, in what we're talking about, the devil possession, and in his right mind. Oh, look at that. With the devil's out, he's sitting, he's closed, and he can think. He's, he's reasonable. And they were afraid. Oh. <laughs> Here is a lunatic maniac, devil possessed. I'm going to say wicked. <laughs> That's just Joe. Just leave him alone. He'll leave you alone. Joe, I don't know his name. He comes up, he's sitting, he's closed, and he's right in my. <gasps> Did you hear Uncle Joe is a Christian now? Ooh, don't invite them to the family picnic. It's going to be Bible and prayer. Oh, Lord, my wife is saved now. and You know, we're not going to have sex. We're going to do cookies and we're going to have baked shows and we're going to have to tithe and all. Oh, no. They want to build a Baptist church on our street? Oh, no, there goes the neighborhood. There's a street preacher here. Hey, it will allow the Catholics... Well, I mean, the Catholics have bake sales, the Catholics have auctions, the Catholics have Jehovah Witnesses, all oh, they'll come knocking your door, that's it. They're not that Baptist. They're afraid of the man that's doing right now. Let me ask you something, Christian. Since you've been born again, have people been afraid of you to how you come out from the devil into Christ? Because the Bible says before you were saved, your father was the devil. Now that God's your father, do you make people afraid? Do you make your co-workers? Oh, man, if I do that in front of him and they ever ask him, he's going to tell the truth. You ever have your co-workers say, oh, uh, don't cuss or something? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were in the room. I have. You ever have some, hey, Fred, come here. I got this joke for you. I said, and you'll see. Oh, wait a minute. I'll tell you later when he's gone. You don't want to hear it, Styler. They're afraid. They're more afraid of you being your right mind, standing with Jesus, seated and clothed, rather than being with the devil. And they saw, and they, yeah, and they that saw it told how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. So he tells them exactly what Jesus does. He professes the testimony of Jesus. And I've been in churches all over, and I've been in some churches, some churches don't do, but anybody got a testimony, and you know, you can hear the crickets in stereo. Nobody wants to raise you. You're always like, I got it. Why are you so afraid to tell what Jesus done? And also concerning the swine. So, you know, hey, they came out of me and went into the swine. Committed hogicide. That's not funny. You know how much money we lost? I always thought it would be kind of funny if that was a swine at the prodigal son sitting there with my now next you know all the swine disappear. Hey, where'd it go? But that's sometimes how I think. 
And they began to pray him, Jesus, to depart out of their coast. You know what America's doing to Jesus in the schools and the courtrooms and everything? Jesus, take that Bible and get out of here. Jesus, we would rather have prayer mats to Allah, to yoga. We rather have the yin yang rather than the cross. America says, Jesus, get out of here. The God of the Bible, get out of here. The churches say, get that King James Bible out of here. We'll bring the worldly Bible in. All are welcome, but Jesus, Revelation chapter 3, he's outside the church knocking. He ain't allowed in the church because they ain't opened the door to him. And he's sure not going to show up. Here he goes, Esther and Tammuz. America has come out, this godly nation, God bless America, they had told God, the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, get out. So what does Jesus do? And when he was coming to the ship, okay, bye. Be careful when you tell Jesus to leave, because you know what? Okay. He said, well, Jesus hasn't left this country. You got a few Christians that are still praying. You wait till we die out. You wait till the modern Christians of the modern Baptist Church and Easter eggs and Esther and all are welcome in the rainbow fags. You wait till those people show up. Then they will completely do what the gay and lesbian, they will do completely what the abortionists, they will do completely what the Catholics do. You will do completely what the religions want. Get Jesus out of here. And he'll get to the point, anybody, Father, like, Jesus, anybody praying for you? That, no, they're not. You know why Lot was spared? Because Abraham was over there praying. He started his prayer, and next thing you know, the angels go into Sodom and all that. And it says, at, uh, it says Abraham woke up in the morning, he saw the smoke, but he ended his prayers. But one man can do in prayer. That's what's keeping this nation together right now. And I ain't talking about, you know, prayers of Mary full of grapes and that other nonsense. And when he entered, come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil, okay, prayed, it's, you know, it's a plea, him, Jesus, that he might be with him. He, he turns to Jesus and says, I want to follow you. Don't let me stay here. Come on, let's get in the ship and go. Wow, he wants to be a follower of Jesus. See, what about those people that, that get saved and don't show up to church and don't do right? I'm not touching that lace. I'm not touching that at all. I know when I got saved, it was church all the time. And I, I, I stopped going to church when I start seeing nonsense in the church. But how be it? Jesus suffered, allowed him not. He said, no. Jesus will never turn you away. Uh, what did he just do to this guy? Where I lead, I will follow. Jesus going back over and he tells the guy, no. What? Did you get that? This man says, Jesus, I want to get in the boat with you. You heard a message like that. Come on in. Jesus says, no. Don't. You ever watch some of your preachers, some, some of your hymns you sing? But said unto him, go. That's an interesting two-letter word. Home to thy friends. You imagine this character coming home. You imagine his wife. Wait a minute. Something's different about him. Tell them how great things the Lord had done for them. Go and tell them about you. Now, wait a minute. We'll keep reading. 
Jesus says, go home and tell everybody what you've done. To this is the same thing of the Philippian jailer. Paul says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And he gets saved and he takes Paul and Silas home. He washes their stripes and his house gets saved. And they put food on. Then they're baptized. He can't preach the gospel because there's no gospel yet. Okay, with the Lord. And he has compassion. Go home and tell them. Well, I think it's going to be, first of all, notice what this guy has changed. The first thing he's going to say, what happened to you? Jesus. Now, let me ask you, Christian. Since the day you've been saved, since the day you've been newly born, have people looked at you and said, what on earth has happened to you? Then could you tell them about Jesus? Or could you tell them about an eight-step program? Do you tell them about your church? <laughs> or your pastor? Or do you tell them what Jesus said? The Lord, the Lord has done for thee. See the Lord, capital L-O-R-D. That's God, Jehovah. Now, are you ready? Are you ready to last verse? He says, go home and tell them what God's done for you. Are you ready? He departed. He did what Jesus said. He left. He began to publish in Decapolis, his hometown over there, how great things Jesus had done to him. Oh, he's not a Jehovah Witness. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things God, the Lord Jehovah, had done for thee, okay? And had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in the Decapolis how great things Jesus, God, the Lord. Look at that. Jesus said, go tell them what God did to thee. He goes home and says, look what Jesus done to me. I bet he upset some Jehovah Witnesses that day. Well, Jesus never said he was God. Uh, Mark 5, 19, Mark 5. Why do churches avoid Mark and run to Matthew? I wonder why. And all the men did marvel. I would too. And then we'll pick up when Jesus passed over by ship the other side. 